Mary, thank you for joining me today for Psalm 119. And we're going to be looking at verses 17 to 24, which means gimel. There we are. And it actually means foot or a camel's foot. And it actually looks a little bit like the letter itself, which is gimel there. Now, you may be able to add something to this. Have you got any information on that, Mary? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, in the Hebrew, that the gimel doesn't look like an L, really. It, it, um, I've got pictures of it, but I'm, I've, I'm using the device at the moment that I've got the pictures on, so I can't yes. show um, them on my phone as well. Um, but, yeah, it means camel. And I, I, I was just looking at the whole psalm, Psalm 119, because it's an alphabetic acrostic, so it yeah. goes through all the stanzas begin with a letter of the Hebrew alphabet. So there are 22 stanzas, and yes. the one for me is Gimel, the third one, which corresponds to the number three or um, C in C. the English language. That's right, C. But um, Gimel, the camel, struck out to me because um, in the Arab culture they think camel is a real gift from god because they provide sustenance they provide travel they provide clothing and milk and they're just really reliable and in this stanza which be begins every single verse begins with the letter gimel in in this particular stanza verses 17 to 24 yeah, and also it meant benefactor, giving to one another. Like yes. you said, they would help each other out. Yeah, yeah. But the whole psalm is is full of, of, of if David wrote it, just trusting God. Doesn't trust himself very much, but he definitely trusts the word of God. And yes. the camel's very reliable. And I yes. think that's, you know, that's what these verses bringing um, out here yeah so mary could you read those verses to yeah. us then please okay gimel be good to your servant that i may live and obey your word open my eyes to see the wonderful truths in your instructions i'm only a foreigner in the land don't hide your commands from me i'm always overwhelmed with a desire for your regulations you rebuke the arrogant those who wander from the from your commands are cursed. Don't let them scorn and insult me, for I have obeyed your laws. Even princes sit and speak against me, but I will meditate on your decrees. Your laws please me. They give me wise advice. Yeah. And what did you actually glean from those verses when you looked into them, Mary? Well, first of all, to be honest, it didn't inspire me at all. And then I read the whole psalm. And it, it sort of comes out that he, the psalmist is actually saying, he's not saying be good to me and bless me because of, for the sake of it, but he's saying so that I can live and glorify you. You know, he's, he's actually turning to God. It, it's, it's completely obvious that he trusts in God com completely in the word of God and in yes. his command and knows that he's against the wicked so he's his protection is there against because because if you turn your eyes to god and you are on god's side and you feel like a foreigner in the land because you're on god's side and you can see the world is corrupt then people of the world can turn against you and i think this is what was happening to the psalmist they were talking about him and being nasty to him because he was on the side of God's commands and he's saying, please protect me from that. Please protect me from that. But most of all, at the beginning, he says, open my eyes to see the wonderful truths. And I think that's that's so true. We can't see anything in the word of God unless we ask him. And with this psalm and the passage you gave me, Gimel, I had to ask, please show me what I can get out of this because yes. I couldn't see anything myself. So God had to open my eyes to see what the psalmist was actually doing. And it's lovely, really. It goes back and forth with this theme that he's looking to God um, for his truth. 
and and his laws and he's on god's side completely and and against all the sin and and the nastiness in the world and uh, i think that's you know just rather lovely yeah and if you notice he he does talk about keeping god's word and um, we certainly need to keep god's word in our own hearts don't we mm. And I think that's important. When you said about open my eyes, you were sort of relating that to yourself as well there, Mary. Yeah. And we need our eyes to be enlightened into our own hearts, I think. And also, I think if we're to keep God's word, we certainly need to understand it. I mean, how many times do we read God's word and think, oh, that's God's word, and we leave it, we put it down, we leave it there. But we need to understand and we need to ask the holy spirit to enlighten like god's word to our hearts and i think we do need those good teachings explained to us would you agree with that i absolutely agree that's exactly what i got from this you know that we need and and how many times have you looked at the bible and you've read something and then you read it another week or a year down the line and it says something completely different to you yes because place with God and he can show you something else it's a bit like a TARDIS the word of God you, you can the more you read it the deeper it goes and you can go deep into it and, and God can show you things from it um, and it can enlighten you and whatever God is saying to your spirit at the time it will speak to that yes so completely individual I love it it's, it's definitely the living word of God you know because it speaks to you where you are and somebody else might read that and get something completely different I love yeah, it. That you is know, so true. Very Holy, true. The Holy Spirit enlightens you, as you say. You're absolutely right. 100% agree with you there. Yeah. And I think also the psalmist, we're not sure whether David wrote it or not, but the psalmist, we do know that, you know, he had this expectation, I think, yeah. for the yeah, um, right. expected things for yeah. God to do. And I think God wants us sometimes to expect the and expected things to happen as well. I can remember once I was at a ladies meeting and I would try to, as I opened up, I wanted a, a quote of some kind to um, make the ladies feel at ease, you know, like a um, an icebreaker. And I read some quote and it says something like, he who comes expecting will um, like get something from, from it. But if you don't, then you, you'll go out with nothing. So I said to the ladies, and I hope that you've come expecting today. Well, yeah. you can imagine everybody started to laugh and I realized what I had <laughs> said. But I think, I think you know, the psalmist, you know, he, he wants, he keeps talking about God's word. He keeps going back to God's word all yeah. the time. And I think that's something we ought to do. And I think sometimes it is better probably to take a small chunk of God's word than understand it, than read lots Love. of it yeah, and yeah. not understand it because... Oh, yeah, anybody can read the scripture and just it's dead. It's just black and white words. I mean, we know, don't we, like um, people that don't believe in God, people that you know, they will read it and just think, oh, that's, that's a load of rubbish and just mm. see it as black and white words. But actually, there's so much more in it. it yes. It's exciting. And if you get excited about it, more comes to light. Like yeah. you say, expecting, expect God to do something. When you come to the word of God, expect God to show you something and he will. Yeah. Yeah. And Mary, I think that's a good place to finish, to expect God to do something for us, just like the psalmist had this expectation from the Lord as well. So thank you for joining me today for Gimel, which you said, Mary, is the letter C, and it meant the camel's foot. So Love. thank you, Mary, for joining me. Thank, thank you. you. Bye.